Hello, and this Science of Sport video um, looks at the BTEC Sport and Exercise Sciences Unit 2 Functional Anatomy Specification, um, learning aim D3, which is part of the skeletal system. And in this sort of second video in this uh, criteria, we're looking at the axial and appendicular skeleton. So the specification actually requires you to consider what bones are part of the axial skeleton and what bones are part of the appendicular skeleton. Now you may be given diagrams that you need to label, you may be giving sporting images where they ask you to identify certain bones, you may need to talk about these bones more specifically, so what type of bone they are, or what function they have. So the type of question that you get an exam paper relating to this topic is more likely to be about other things as well as just the, the skeletal bones. So let's have a look firstly at the axial skeleton. So an axis is an imaginary line that runs through the centre of a body. We tend to rotate around an axis. And what the axial skeleton does, it, well, this, it, it becomes this axis with which the limbs attach to and move around. So this is the central axis, the central part of our skeleton um, that our other appendicular skeleton is attached to and moves from or moves around. You can see in the blue colouring on the diagram there that the axial skeleton is made up of the cranium, the skull, the vertebral column and our thoracic cage, this combination of ribs and the sternum. And those bones are what we would include in the axial skeleton. It's the central core, the central part of the body that our appendages, our limbs, attach to. So looking just specifically at each part of the axial skeleton then, here's a close-up of our um, cranium, what we hopefully know already. Please don't be uh, concerned about these names, you will not need to name all of these these bones. What would be really good is maybe you learnt one of them. So the frontal bone or the parietal bone or the occipital bone, they might be some of the easier ones to learn. These are facial bones. It's these cranial bones, which are flat bones actually, which you could give as a really good example in, in another question. So the cranium is made up of a series of fused flat bones, uh, fused together in an in a, uh, immovable joint. Then, of course, we've got the thoracic cage, which is made up of our ribs and our sternum. Sternum is a flat bone. It's protective flat bone at the front. And the ribs are also actually flat bones, even though they're not what you generally might understand as flat. But they, they have a flat element to them. They connect at the back at the vertebral column. And most of them connect at the sternum. Some don't connect to the sternum. You can see these lower ones down here don't connect to the sternum at all. Um, but this is the thoracic cage and this is a, again a very protective element of the body. Inside we've got our heart and lungs and other, abdomen, uh, other organs but essentially it's for connection and protection. Then the final part of our axial skeleton are, is our vertebral column and again this diagram shows that we have as you might recognise, lots of vertebrae that connect together in joints. These are cartilaginous joints because there are discs of cartilage between them. And collectively, this is our vertebral column. On the right there, we've got a diagram showing each vertebra and just some of the lig ligamenture. So these white bits of connective tissue are ligaments. And how protected and stabilised our vertebral column is with these ligaments. Ligaments stabilise joints. They allow movement in certain directions and they avoid unwanted movement. Really important in protecting um, particularly our lumbar vertebrae, the vertebrae at the bottom of our back that cope with huge weights and lots of big movements. Okay, so they're the three components of the axial skeleton. And here's just a little bit more detail about them. So what I suggest you do is you pause the video and have a little look through individually at the bones that make up each of the three areas of the axial skeleton.
Okay, so moving on to the appendicular skeleton. So the axial skeleton is in the diagram in blue. The appendicular skeleton are the lighter coloured bones. So as you can see, we've basically got the pectoral girdle or shoulder girdle, the, the, gir the bones that make up the shoulder on either side. And we've got the upper limbs, so these bones that make up our arms. We've got the pelvic girdle, the hip bones, and we've got the bones that make up our lower limbs, our legs. These are the appendicular skeleton, and they connect to the axial skeleton at the two sets of girdles. Let's look individually at the shoulder girdle then. So the scapula, this shoulder blade that we have at the back, now the the term I would hope that we would use in our, our BTEC work would be the scapula. That's the proper anatomical term. You might know it from GCC as shoulder blade. The best way to connect the two is they both begin with S. So shoulder blade is your scapula. Sometimes these get confused. So connect the S's and connect the C's. That would be the best way to, to hopefully use the right terminology. So this is this flat bone at the back of our shoulders that we can move um, about quite freely and the only place it connects to another bone so the only joint the scapula has is to the clavicle here this is our collarbone so you can probably palpate your collarbone what that means is put your fingers on and feel your collarbone at the front sort of just below your neck at the top of your chest so that's your clavicle your collarbone and it connects or joins with the scapula posteriorly at the back here this is the little girdle or the area which makes up our shoulder that the head of the humerus so the ball here this is a ball and socket joint so the ball head of the humerus our upper arm bone fits into the socket of the shoulder girdle okay so this is where our arm connects to our shoulder then we've got our upper limbs so as i said we've just talked about this joint here the clavicle, the scapula, and the humerus, these long bones that make up our arm, short bones of the carpals, and long bones of the metacarpals and phalanges. Phalanges are your fingers in this case. So again, you'd need to know the humerus, the radius, and the ulna. And the radius is always effectively on top, your thumb side of your lower arm, and your ulna is underneath. And a simple way of remembering that is ulna underneath. Here's a, here's a closer up diagram of the different uh, bones of the wrist so the wrist is this joint here the radius and ulna connect to the carpals this is your palm the metacarpals and these of course your fingers your knuckles are here so here's a table again pause the video digest some of the more detailed information about the bones of the upper appendicular skeleton so the shoulder girdle the arm and the hands this is just the upper part the upper appendages um, start making connections if i were you between which bones are what type of bone so clavicles long bones scapulae flat bones humerus long bone and of course the role that they have moving on to the lower part of our body then we've got the pelvic girdle which is made up of the bones of our pelvis, these are regular bones that are fused together. So the pelvic bones are not one big bone. It's a couple of bones that are fused together. The ilium is the top bone. The ischium is the lower bone. And, I, and I'm sure you're all aware of your pubis, the sort of bony part at the front of your, your lower torso. These typically are protect, protective. So we have a lot of critical digestive and sex organs that are within the pelvis and these bones and this girdle not only protects them but also is a place where our limbs our legs can attach so you can just about see on this diagram the top of the femur the head of the femur which is connected it's a ball and socket joint again it's connected in a socket in the pelvis our lower limbs then so again we've just talked about the pelvic bones the pelvic girdle and the connection with our femur, this big long bone, the biggest long bone in the body. The head of the femur sits in this socket of the pelvis. It connects with the lower limbs at the knee joint, the 
tibia is your big shin bone and the fibula is the smaller bone that par runs parallel to the tibia but the tibia is the main bone there and of course don't forget the sesamoid bone this patella in the knee joint a protective bone we've got our ankle which is the tarsals and the long bones of the met or the foot and the toes the metatarsals and the phalanges the main part of your foot are metatarsals your phalanges are your toes the ankle is the tarsals and again a close-up version to show that here so the ankle the main part of your foot and then the phalanges are your toes similarly then pause the video have a look at the detail given to the bones of your body these are the lower limb pelvic girdle leg and foot again you would need to be able to identify any of these bones in diagrams and state what type of bone they are and what their job is, what function they have.